Hi there, welcome back to the Art of Business English podcast, where we help people like you get the language skills you need for doing business in English. In this week's episode, we're gonna be looking at awkward situations. I'm not sure, but have you ever been in an awkward situation? I'm sure you have, and wondered how to express your discomfort in a polite way. Maybe it's better to be polite. Or have you ever needed to ask another person for something that you need them to do without sounding like you're a bit bossy? Uh, so in this episode, what we're going to do is review some expressions which will help you to achieve these purposes and pave the way to fix unpleasant situations smoothly. So let's dive in. Okay, so some of these phrases are useful to politely introduce a topic that you may need to discuss or to request a change of conduct. Basically, this is so that uh, you can express to others that you are aware that your opinion might not be shared by the other person, but that you're asking for their consideration and some others are used to make suggestions. Okay, so these expressions have some different uses, but they're also very useful. Uh, first, of course, as always, I'll present you with the expression and then give you an example of how to use it. I'm also gonna explain what this expression means. So a bit of context as well, which will help you a lot. So let's start with my first one. So the first one on my list is, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? So this phrase is regularly used when you think that the person listening actually understands. And in, as, as a result, you don't need to say any more. It's just like a little thing that you put at the end of your of your sentence. So uh, let me give an example. When you submit your report late, it puts the whole team behind schedule. Do you know what I mean? So again, obviously the person's probably gonna say, yes, or I know what you mean. Okay, so we understand that they will understand us. So do you know what I mean? Number two on my list is, there's something I've been meaning to talk to you about. Okay, this, this is an expression which convey, conveys or transmits to the listener that you've been thinking of how to deal with the topic for some time and now it is time or it would be useful for you to introduce it to them. So when your boss says, oh, there's something I wanna to talk to you about, people get a bit nervous, but it depends on the way you do it. Okay, so let me give you an example. There's something I've been meaning to talk to you about. It's just that you often talk loudly on your mobile phone in the office and it's disturbing people when we're trying to work. Now, we use this expression just to introduce something that maybe is a little bit uncomfortable to say. My third expression is, I would feel better if you warned me next time. I would feel better if you warned me next time. So this expression is used to request a change of conduct, giving as an argument that the previous approach made you uncomfortable. So the thing that they did before made you feel uncomfortable, so now you're asking them for a change in behavior. So an example would be, I would feel better if you warned me next time you're going to be late. Meaning, I don't like that you're being late. If you are, then change your behavior and in future, warn me. Number four, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. And this phrase, is used to make sure that someone doesn't think that something is true when it is not. Okay, maybe they imagine something that's not true. What we do is we introduce the, the thing we wanna say by saying, I don't want you to get the wrong idea, but you keep coming over to my desk and interrupting me to talk about your weekend and I have so much work to do. So you're basically telling the person, you know, I like you, I like that we talk, but you know, can you please stop interrupting me all the time? You don't, want, you, want, you don't want them to think that you don't like them. All right, number five. I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but, and it's used when you don't want to offend another person by a remark because they understood it wrongly or incorrectly. So we're just trying to set them up, making sure they don't misunderstand. So I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but I think it would be easier for everyone if you sent out an agenda before holding a meeting. So you expect them to have an agenda. No agenda, no meeting is the rule, no, in general. But some people don't send agendas and then the meeting's a waste of time. 
So you don't want to, you don't want, you don't want to offend them, but you would, you expect in future that there is an agenda. The next one is, it would put my mind at ease if you would. To put your mind at ease means to keep someone calm or relaxed, they don't feel bad. And this expression conveys that a change of conduct would make you feel calmer, so more relaxed, less stressed. For example, it would put my mind at ease if you'd call me when you get home. Often a parent says that. When you get home or when you get home from the party, call me or send me a message so I feel less stressed or worried. Number seven, do you see where I'm coming from? Do you see where I'm coming from? The phrase or this phrase indicates one's motivation or reason for doing something or holding some position or opinion. So for example, you could say, I know that you like to be very perfectionist with your work, but we are falling behind schedule. Do you see where I'm coming from? So you're not, you don't want to criticize the person for being, you know, perfectionist or doing their job really well. But, you know, per perfection is often the enemy of done. So you're saying, look, be, show attention to detail, but could we just do things a little bit faster? And you can see that in these, like, you know, expressions, there's a lot of context behind them. All right, so number eight on my list is, how can I put this? It just feels to me that. How can I put this? It just feels to me that. To put something, like, in this context means how can I say it? This expression conveys that you have been thinking on how to communicate something in a polite way. For example, you could say, how can I put this? It just feels to me that you don't pay enough attention to what I say. So you're trying to be delicate without offending the person, but at the same time, you need to say that they need to listen to you more. Number nine, there is something I'd like to talk to you about. Very easy one, very common. And this phrase is useful to introduce a topic you need to discuss. It doesn't have to be a bad topic, but it may be something that you're just feeling a little bit uncomfortable talking about, so you say it like this. It's an easy way to start this conversation. For example, you could say, there is something I'd like to talk to you about. I've been offered a position abroad, and I'm planning to move by the end of the month. Wow, okay, that's big news. Okay, but you've started it. It's not easy to say it, but you've said it. Number 10, maybe you should, and the thing, how does that sound? How does that sound? So how does it sound means, does it seem like a good idea to you? So these couple of phrases are used to suggest what is the right or sensible thing to do. We often do that as a parent. How does that sound? You should try this, how does that sound? For example, you could say, maybe you should talk to Christian before taking a decision. How does that sound? So you're giving the advice and then you're just giving this little question at the end to say, do you like my idea? Is it a good idea for you? Number 11, how would you feel about, I like this expression, how would you feel about, and this is used to ask someone for their opinion. So we can often do this in a meeting. How would you feel about working in another branch for the next few months? Maybe it's a bit Awkward, that situation. How would you feel about working in another branch for the next few months? Another branch is like another offer. Okay, number 12. I hope this doesn't come as too much of a shock, but, remember, a shock is something that's surprising. I hope this doesn't come as too much of a shock, but, and this phrase basically means that you don't want someone to feel upset or surprised by your words. For example, you could say, oh, I hope this doesn't come as too much of a shock, but I really want to quit my job in order to start my own business. Maybe that's something you would say to your husband or your wife. Number 13 on my list is, I don't want to upset you, but, and to upset someone is to make them angry or feel sad. I don't want to upset you, but, this expression is commonly used to introduce bad news or an opinion which might be disagreeable to the other person. Let me give you an example. I don't want to upset you, but the way that you talk to your colleagues is very disrespectful. I think you need to change that. Okay, so it's a difficult thing to say that. You're telling them that they're being disrespectful, but they have to change their behavior. Okay, number 14 on my list is, I hope you can see 
where I am coming from. I hope you can see where I am coming from. And this expression has a similar meaning to, I hope you understand, and it refers to a reason for holding a certain position or opinion. For example, you could say, I find it difficult to work when you are making noise. I hope you can see where I'm coming from. Again, you don't want to offend them, but you know, you need to work and it's very difficult to concentrate. Number 15, I'm really sorry to have to say this, but, okay, so you're, you're, you're making, you're apologizing, but you're gonna say something that maybe the person doesn't like. And this is another useful phrase to introduce bad news or to communicate a difficult topic. It conveys that you would prefer not to do it, but you know, you have to. I'm sorry to say this, but I have to do it. Okay, so an example would be, I'm really sorry to have to say this, but you should dress more formally when visiting our customers. So you don't want to offend the person about the way they, they're dressed, but hey, you need to tell them because then they're, they're not dressing appropriately for the meetings with customers. And those are my 15 expressions for dealing with awkward, complicated situations. I hope you've enjoyed them. And of course, uh, if you do have any other expressions, then by all means, yeah, you should share them and you can you know, use them both in your social situations when you face an awkward situation or you can use them at work, especially if you're a manager and you're dealing with people. And as always, if you do have any questions, we would like to add other expressions, then why don't you send me a message on SpeakPipe below on the blog or you can uh, just drop a comment on the blog too, okay? Uh, you've got my link in the, my SpeakPipe link on the blog in the YouTube video and uh, show notes for the podcast. So that's it for me, people. I really hope you've enjoyed this, this uh, episode. Make sure you head over to the blog and take some notes on all of this language because it's very useful. And I'll see you all next week on the podcast. Take care. Bye for now.